Hello, school families, uh, middle school families in particular, um, with some of the changes that have happened with moving to the standards-based assessment and grading, I thought it might be helpful for me to show all of you um, what the PowerSchool parent interface looks like now with the changes. Some of you have accessed PowerSchool before and know what that looks like under the previous parent portal look. And I wanna show you what that new parent portal looks like and also how you can understand the information that's provided inside that uh, PowerSchool parent portal. I have my door shut so I can have my mask off and communicate well with you all. However, I'm going to switch to a screen share here um, so that you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at. And we're gonna begin with this. So when you go to log into PowerSchool, you're going to use this website and I'll put this in the email that I send this video attached to as well so that you can go ahead and just click that hyperlink for the first time to access it. Now if you've already created an account you should um, be able to log in here. If you haven't, um, fifth grade families who were brand new, I sent you information on how to create account just for the sake of showing you this tab right here on the screen that says create account would be where you would go and fill out information. So here is where you would choose, you know, first name, last name, choose your email, and then your desired username and password. They will kick it out if somebody already uses that um, login name. For example, if you had a, a, a common last name and tried to use just your common last name, it would likely spit it out. And then all of your password criteria are here. I gave you a access ID and access password inside the email that I sent to you if you haven't already accessed it. And if you're not a fifth grade family, but you still hadn't accessed it in the past and would like me to resend this information to you, just shoot me an email and I will take care of sending this to you. But here is where you would type your student's name and then that access ID and password. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that previous screen and I'm going to log in as myself. Now I have my son, Jack linked to this screen and uh oops that's what happens when i talk and type my password at the same time i will make an error i have my son jack his legal name is john for those who didn't know that attached here and i got permission um, from him to use his interface but i also had mrs wilson work with me and enter some fake grades in a section so that if by chance, hypothetically, Jack were not doing very well in a subject that isn't hung out for everybody to have to see. When you log in, this is the screen you will see. And there are so many things we can use in this interface, but I'm going to just give you the bare bones of what you would look at typically right now. Um, if you look at this screen, it looks as though nothing is here to somebody who has used this interface before. So in under the past um, system where we were using all letter grades for class, you would see a letter grade under the quarter right here where this has an I. Because we're using standards-based, we can enter a percentage or a letter grade for an assignment However, they won't appear on a report card. So most teachers are not using those percentage and letter grades, but rather entering the grades that are better able to be used for a report card. Um, another thing I want to point out is in fifth through eighth grade this year, we did a block schedule for science and social studies. So during the first two quarters, there will be no assignments in for science, but there will be a ton for social studies. And then in the second semester, there will be no more added social studies, but there will be for science. And that'll kick in right at the end of this quarter. And this quarter end is coming up pretty quickly here. Um, Father Mike's religion grades also, this religion section is listed with Mrs. Wilson as the teacher in the event we would have gone virtual. So there will not be any grades in the religion class and that's for anybody. Fifth and sixth grade have Mrs. Gross listed as their religion teacher, but you won't see their religion grades in that section. 
unless there might be occasional times where the teachers had a religion assignment, but their actual grade ends up being an amalgamation of what we get for Father Mike's religion grades and the homeroom teachers um, assessment as well. I'm going to use that foreign language class that Mrs. Wilson put some grades in for Jack. So again, these are <laughs> fake grades utilized so that I wouldn't have to um, hang my child's <laughs> performance in front of anybody. To see how he performed, I'm gonna line up under quarter two and I'm going to go to that class and click the I. When I click on this I, it shows me this information. Assignments are listed here. It tells you whether the assignments are classwork, a project, a test, a quiz, et cetera. When you see these check marks here, it means that assignment was collected. Obviously you're saying, Ali, it doesn't have a score. You're right, that's because that's where the teacher could list a percentage or a number of points a child earned. But again, since those don't, they will not show up on our report card. Our report card doesn't work to allow them to show. They've been focusing on adding those standards markings instead. When I click that little blue box, I'll do that again, just so you see. I click the little blue box next to the assignment. This is where it shows me what um, standards were assessed on that assignment. And it also shows me what score he got for each of those. And as a reminder, a one in the most basic terms, a one would mean he's that a child really only has the basics of how to do something, but still has some development to go. A two means they can do it sometimes, but it's inconsistent or they're able to do it, but they need some prodding or some reminders to be able to do that. That really means making progress, but not, not quite fully mastered yet. A three is completely mastered. They've got this. They can do it by themselves. And usually mastery is like 85%, 85% of the time. Though that's, you know, we try not to use the percentages because if we would grade somebody on knowing the alphabet, for example, until they know the alphabet, they're getting all bad grades. And then they know the alphabet and they got 100%. If we were to average that, it would look like the child hadn't mastered the alphabet, but now they know it. So their grade would be reflective of what they actually know and can do now. This would be reflective of that if this were an actual grade that Jack is solid in relating the practices, perspectives, and products of cultures, um, but probably still has some work to do related to communities. Now you might notice, I'm gonna just drop that back down. This assignment has a flag and that flag is for a missing assignment. And the teacher put a little comment here. That's what that little talking box means. If I click this view box, it pops up the score comment and says it's a missing assignment and please submit by Friday 115 for credit. To close it, I can say okay here or I can X here and that will disappear. Those are nice if you have any questions about an assignment too, if the teacher wants to make a mark student was absent or in COVID world student was in quarantine or whatever the situation is that the assignment night might not be turned in but that's when it would not be calculated. Now, again, a teacher can choose to put those uh, percent scores in. However, they're not very good information compared to the standards information um, that's used on a test. Getting an A on an assignment, or a B actually is a better example. To get a B on an assignment, the student could be doing really great in one standard and really not so great in another standard. And it just happened to be heavily weighed towards the one. That's why that information is a little more beneficial without the scores. However, you're certainly welcome to um, speak to teachers to get a perspective of what that looks like as we transition and learn how to look at grades inside um, this new setup. All teachers should have grades in for this quarter and you should be able to access this for any of those classes other than those couple I mentioned. Homeroom doesn't have any standards or grades marched to it, though they do have what they call success indicators. And success indicators are those learner behaviors, things like turning in their work on time, being a conscientious student, um, conscientious student, making sure that you know they are respectful, helpful of others. Those kinds of things fall under that. 
Um, so that would be what you would see if you would click on homeroom. We only assess those. We do that towards the end of the quarter. So there aren't regular assignments to assess those. One other thing I wanna show you, you can take the time yourself to play in here and see what you have. School bulletin is if we would choose to send announcements through PowerSchool, we choose not to do that so that we reach kids of all grade levels and we send them via email, but that's what that one means. Um, balance is if we were collecting payments through here, we don't currently collect payments this way either, um, but these are all different options that are available. The one I wanna show you is standards grades. When you click standards grades, this, let's give it a second to call up. This is a list of all classes. And to see a child's standards grades, I will use that foreign language again to not out all of his grades. It will show all of the standards for that quarter and what his current level of mastery is in each of those. This is essentially what the report card would look like before it's printed out. Now it keeps changing as we add more work. This is automatically generated based on the most recent assignments and the child's progress and growth, but this is a handy tool. This will not tell you if your child is turning in their assignments, but this is a place where you can see how all of this comes together as an average so far. As a goal, threes are the goal, achieving mastery. There is a four. Fours are rare and they're for someone that goes above and beyond, takes it, turns it into something new and can teach it to others. Those are more unusual for students to achieve. Threes are your good grades in power school. Two is you're making progress. Two's pretty good. Ones are when we need to start looking about an inter into intervention to see if we can be of additional support to a child. And that would be for us and for parents to communicate together. That's what PowerSchool looks like right now. I'm glad to answer any questions or give any information to assist anybody. Should you have any questions about how to receive this? Again, I know this is very different from the setup you and I grew up in with using the A's, B's and C's. And the only piece I want to make sure I include as I comment on this is remember, a four is not an A, a three is not a B, a two is not a C. It doesn't work like that. This grading system is completely different and it's based on their ability to be um, to master specific skills. A three is an A and a B. A two could be a B, it could be a C, it just sort of depends. It's not an apples to apples comparison. So if you really want that picture of how your child is doing outside of just these, reaching out to your kiddo's teacher is going to be your best bet. I hope this was helpful to you. Again, if you struggle with accessing this or for some reason your access account isn't working, if you have multiple children and it's only working for one, whatever the circumstance, please reach out to me or your child's teacher and we'll be glad to assist in any way that we can. I hope this is helpful. Again, I will look forward to connecting with you if I can be of any help to any of you. Have a great day.